Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video and a very special video it is indeed because I'm unboxing my very latest book, The Mighty Onion. Let's go ahead and slice the old box open. I have been pretty tight-lipped about this project. I have not really explained very much about what the story involves, but today, by way of this video, I promise you, I am going to reveal all. So let's go ahead and have a look at the Mighty Onion. Of course I have the box upside down. Isn't that just the Krilly way? But look at it. There it is. This color green, this like day glow green, they gotta pay extra for that. It's sort of a, a special thing that they did to really make this book stand out. Oh, and I wish you could feel the weight of it. It's just like heavier than any book I've ever had published, and that is due to the quality of the paper, no doubt. Oh, it is a thing of beauty, my friends, and I sure did work hard on this. <laughs> and I'm ready to get into it and show you what it's all about. Finally, give me just a second. I'm going to clear this box away, and we are going to get into it. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, for many years, I've wanted to do a book that would really experiment with the whole idea of what a book can be, and this is that book. I begin with this notebook that belongs to the main character, Elliot Quigley, and uh, so if you uh, start turning the pages here you might think, oh this is kind of like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. He's uh, doing drawings occasionally in his own sort of cruddy, <laughs> bad drawing style, which is kind of part of the plot, uh, but then you might be surprised to find that, oh it's not a no notebook anymore, here it's this um, pad of like promotional uh, note-taking paper from Schmerple Lawn Care. Uh, don't just fertilize it, schmerpleize it. Uh, so already we're getting you a little bit off guard here of like, oh, wait a minute, it's not always going to be a notebook. It could be almost anything as I turn from one page to the other. Like he gets frustrated with his ideas. He's trying to come up with a good idea for a superhero comic. And to show you that he hated his idea, I just do this illustration of a balled up piece of paper. Of course, this is highly realistic uh, artwork. Uh, and over here you have this kind of deliberately cruddy looking artwork. I think when people take a moment to study this and see what it is I'm doing, they're going to notice that it actually is combining all manner of different uh, illustration styles and sort of playing around with this three-dimensional look of uh, reminding you that you are looking at a, a real notebook, not just some sort of like uh, using it as a, uh, a symbolic thing. This is meant to really look like you're, you've got the notebook in your hand almost. And so when he goes and gets his onion rings, we see uh, the grease stains on, his, uh, on the squishy burger uh, napkin. And uh, this is how we see the birth of what he believes is a really brilliant idea for a superhero, the Mighty Onion. And of course, when he tries to create the comic himself, he finds that his drawing skills are severely limited, and he gets so frustrated that he has to just give up. But that couldn't be the end of the story. Of course not. When he's back at school, he sees this uh, girl by the name of Pam Jones, who actually has superior drawing skills to him. So, of course, I had to devise a completely different drawing style that would be Pam's drawing style. Uh, and uh, Pam's got her own uh, font, her own handwriting that is different from his. And you see like little stamps here, you know, from one of these little ink stamps. I'm always playing around with delivering different visual things to you uh, that kind of keep you on your toes as a reader. You never really know what's going to come next. And uh, so uh, on this page I decided to create a dialogue scene by way of notes that they pass to each other in class. And uh, again, like with everything else, I'm like v being very careful about drop shadows and trying to make it look believably like a folded piece of paper with even with like thumbprints on it uh, <laughs> that uh, a kid might pass to another kid in class. Now, some of you might be thinking, boy, Mark, you're spoiling the whole story, but honestly, I'm only going to get you to the, the basics of the beginning uh, of the uh, plot line here. And, of course, uh, at one point, she begins creating her version of the comic, which is uh, far superior 
to what he was doing. Now this is, when we get to these comic book pages, we get extended sequences where you can really um, get into reading that story. But always you end up going back to some other form of storytelling that you might not have expected. At some point, uh, his comic gets torn into pieces. And uh, he's so uh, upset about that, that you can see him sort of screaming, and then his mom uh, buys him these inspirational stickers. This is one of my favorite aspects of the book, because this comes back again and again. And you keep seeing these things applied to the surface of the page. Hang in there, baby! Uh, that remind you of the fact that you're looking at a notebook. And this is one of the things that I think sets this apart from any other uh, sort of diary-type book. Uh, this really commits to the idea of reminding you of the, the existence of the notebook. And of course, he's not going to give up on his torn-up comic book. He's going to tape it back together with sticklers, adhesive tape. Stick with sticklers. And, you know, even something like this... You know, it had to be done in Photoshop quite quite painstakingly to create the illusion of this torn up comic page that has uh, been pieced back together. And I think that's probably as good a place as any for me to uh, stop showing you uh, any more about the interior of this book and just hope that what I've shown you today gets you curious to see what other things, because there are plenty of them, what other methods of storytelling I have woven uh, into this story. So I think it's time for me to uh, say goodbye for now. Thank any of you who choose to order this book. I've put a link in the description uh, of the video uh, that allows you to go ahead and buy it. It is uh, going to be published on April 2nd. That is um, just a couple of weeks away from now. So uh, thank you very, very much, any of you who choose to support me that way. But let's go ahead and wind this one down by saying thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.